Alrighty then. to get the to get back to Well, it's a, definitely a huge relief. Everyone feels excited. And uh, it's exciting times. And you know, we're here at Lutakko playing our first live show. And really fun to play the new songs. You have some big dates coming up after your show in Helsinki. First, uh, Heidenfest. We also participated in the tour last year, and now this, yeah. this year. Yeah. You had Lani. Do you think it will be a lot different than the last time? What are your expectations this time around? Any important things you have in the specific? I think we have now a better live setup, and we have the backdrops and everything, so I think it will look much better. And our playing is also better. We have a longer set list. Uh, I think it's gonna be crazy and fun. And we'll see what happens. Uh, secondly, there's the upcoming North America. How do you feel about playing shows in the first time? And what do you think you can do to us? Mm. To see the skyscrapers. <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, I heard lots of horror stories from touring about the United States, especially small the signs of tour there. <laughs> it's not as glam glamorous, but uh, I think the fans will make everything work. So when, when you play a show and you hear the feedback from fans, that always makes everything better. I think. Yeah, but that that isn't a problem. I sometimes actually like more intimate life in these shows. Yeah. In regards to the plans that you're in town with, I think you have mentioned in the previous interview that you have some material like some dancing for the show. Can you tell us more about that? And do you already have some songs ready for recording? How is that for us? Well, I have tons of stuff. This has been many years. Constantly writing new stuff. I think in 2010 I had a kind of a big, kind of long, long strike, or how do you say, it, where I wrote like hundreds of riffs. You know, I think one of my best material ever, so I'm really excited to, uh, to get working on them. We actually now are going to get a kind of a mobile laptops uh, studio set up for the tour so I can start some of the pre-production of those albums. So there's good stuff coming up. What elements of time one into the present that how will you compare to your existence? You mean the new stuff? Yeah. Uh, I think there's still gonna be a little bit of those oriental uh, influence melodies, the instruments. Yeah, less, but still, still there. And, um, I think it's gonna be maybe even more riff, riff based. Some really cool riffs that are written. And, uh, I don't know, maybe go into the space a little bit. Some sci-fi melodies. Now that you have the tools and experience, how will you approach the recording of the music? How will you approach the recording of the music process? Well, definitely going to be much uh, specific about the guitar sounds, the drum sounds, uh, the bass, the meat and potatoes of the sound. So when I get those right, then I, I can pick all that. Orchestration and all the overdubs and suits and stuff. What's better? Because if the meat and potatoes are not working, then everything else will not sound good either. So I'm actually I'm thinking I'm gonna do everything first using uh, this uh, drum drum machine called Super, Super, Superior Drummer. 
and uh, I think we're actually this time what Fisher up was gonna record the drums last. So I'm gonna do basically everything first and then we go to the studio record drums. Yeah. Have you, been, have you ever planned on like, featuring a female vocalist? Uh, yeah, I've been thinking about it because uh, I've used this, uh, uh, this sample based sounds like soprano. But those notes are kind of hidden in the orchestration and beneath all the layers. But I've been thinking that it would be cool to have some real singers and albums. Yeah. Some songs on the subtitle album sound are spoken in terms of the uh, lyrics on time one and two also is personal experiences on a single individual or something more abstract like this. Yeah, there's definitely more uh, personal stuff in the lyrics than in the debut, debut album. Uh, and the lyrics are quite a bit simpler also. Uh, and uh, yeah, they still, you know, I use lots of metaphors and uh, I, I like to write lyrics so that everyone can identify with their own lives in the lyrics. So I never really want to reveal too much what the, what the song is about. Yeah. If it wasn't for travel expenses and such, would you now consider that you keyboard player from the organic pirates group? No, we're not looking for a keyboard player because uh, even 10 keyboard, keyboard players couldn't play this stuff because it's just a kind of big wall of sound and orchestra and different. Even there's lots of different uh, synth sounds going on, so it would be possible. And, uh, we have a very good chemistry with the four guys. We are fine now. And so, um, you mentioned that you recorded some of your music ideas on the iPhone. How did you record them? Did you hum them on your own? Did you use them? Yeah, it's just a basic uh, part was recorded. Oh, okay. uh, usually let's play chords, uh, the guitar and hum melodies and some of the chords or just play it and just record them with the iPhone and then later I put them to the computer and start a few based project and then start uh, kind of building the songs with samples and uh, drum machines and sample bass and getting the basic structure of the song together. How was it like meeting Devin McCarthy and having to Was he at all aware of the events of this place? Has he been in the place? No, we're, we're not. I haven't talked to him besides the interview. But uh, it was just a really nice experience because uh, he's been my idol since I was, I don't know, 15 or 16. Ever since I heard uh, him singing on Steve Weiss, how it was sex and religion. So, so it was just amazing to meet him. He was just a relaxed guy. Great guy. Name a few of your favorite instruments. Instrumental albums. Well, definitely Steve Weiss, Passion and Warfare. And then Martin Friedman's uh, first album, or his traffic skills or something. And the second album, Seeds. And then. Uh, I don't really listen to the instrumental music anymore. Uh, 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 of course, except the soundtracks. I really like the soundtracks like Memoirs of a Gaze and Eden Dragon and Rotten Tiger. Also, the Fountain. But Finny Mountain is the first album. It's a great instrument. Although I think there's one from two songs with vocals. I remember right now. Any Japanese instrument? 